Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 4. Today we're going to be doing my ranking for all the episodes in Season 4, so this is going to be acting as my season overview. I know it's a bit late, but I sort of just waited on it a bit, sort of looked back, reminded myself of some of the episodes that maybe I forgot, and I did forget some of them, and yeah, so this is going to be my ranking, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so this was kind of hard to organize. It was kind of like a whole big mess. So I'm going to do my best, and we're going to rank these bit by bit. So at first, we have episode one. So I've got the images that correlate to the episodes. So episode one, obviously the season premiere, we had the introduction of Nia. We had Jensen with Alex at the DEO and sort of Brainy just struggles to get in sync with Alex. So this episode, as you know if you were around, I wasn't a big fan of this episode. We had Mercy and Otis Graves, we had Agent Liberty. I thought Agent Liberty was probably the most interesting thing. The thing about this episode is, it didn't feel like Supergirl, so I wasn't a fan of it and I am think I'm going to actually rate it at a D because... Yeah, I just wasn't a big fan of that episode, and so let's move on to talk about number two, so episode two of season four, this sort of follows on from what happened, so at the end of last episode, in episode one, Kara falls from the sky, this is because of Mercy and Otis Graves, they let out the kryptonite, and so Supergirl sets out to catch her Mercy and Otis, and then we have one of the cooler scenes, I think, in the episode was definitely with Kara and Alex, and... No, sorry, not Alex, Kara and Lena, where they're running around and she sneezes, and it's quite neat. But the thing is about this episode is I didn't really like it overall. I thought it was just a continuation. Didn't feel like Supergirl. Very, very political, and I don't have a problem with the politics in the show. I think that's really good, and it works a lot of the time. I just don't think it worked in the first two episodes especially because it seemed like... There was no story and all it was focusing on was the politics. Like we had the absolutely atrocious scene, probably the worst scene in the entire season, the pizza scene with Nia and Brainy. It was the worst shit ever. It was so cringy. And the guys who were the pizza guys, the worst actors in the show. Oh my god. It was as nearly as bad as that scene in The Flash season 4 with Cecile being that surfer dude. It was that bad. I really, really didn't like that scene, and so I'm going to put episode two. I'm not gonna lie, I'm probably gonna put it in F. I really, really didn't like it. I maybe had like one good thing about the episode, and that was about it. Okay, so let's move on to talk about episode three. So, episode three was titled Man of Steel, and I really liked this episode. This was the Agent Liberty lep episode, and uh, Kara was by the end put into the special suit that was to come in the next few episodes and yeah this episode was good it was a origin story for Agent Liberty and sort of acted as a good start to the season where episode 1 and 2 failed for me and obviously there wasn't much to go this was the episode where Melissa was actually away so yeah I'm gonna put this in a B spot I thought it was a pretty good episode definitely compared to the first two Okay, so let's move on. We've got number four, and so episode four is Ahimsa. So this episode, as far as I can recall, I can't really remember this one. This is one of the ones I kind of forgot, but I know we have Jean and Manchester Black together, so Supergirl needs help in this episode. Alex asks Lena and Brainy to team up, and so Jean sort of questions his decision, and then we have this pretty cool fight scene that we had where we had Supergirl in the special suit and you know I think we have the death of Mercy and Otis Graves that was a good thing about the episode we had that sort of weird fight scene where she was fighting all those people when she was in the suit and we had those different perspectives because you know Melissa wasn't around so I thought this episode was pretty good I thought it was getting back on track to sort of the Supergirl I know I'm gonna put a C I didn't think it was anything too amazing but I didn't think it was you know, bad at all. I thought it was actually a pretty good episode and I was impressed. And yeah, moving on to episode 5. Episode 5, we have Parasite versus Supergirl. 
So they find out that Jensen, who was a DEO agent, he becomes Parasite, they stop him, and we had this really cool opening scene, and it was like a sort of party for them, and it was cool, I liked that, and I thought this episode was a big improvement, definitely by this point I was like, okay, I'm sort of seeing a big improvement, so I'm going to go, I'm going to put this at a high, high C, maybe we'll switch that over and do that, like that. Yeah, I thought that was much better. Okay, so let's move on. So, which episode? We're on episode 6 right now. So, 6 is Call to Action. And Call to Action, I do believe, was the episode where Supergirl and Manchester Black, they're sort of properly together and introduced. We have them fighting a little bit together. And so, this episode, I thought it was pretty good. There was a dragon fight, which was pretty cool. And some various different good things, but... I didn't think it was anything too amazing, and we had that debate with Ben Lockwood, with Kara. I don't think I was such a big fan, but I haven't watched this episode since it came out, so as far as I can remember, I'm going to put this at a C, like a low C. I thought it was pretty decent, but I didn't, you know, it didn't blow my mind or anything. So, moving on, we have episode 7, and episode 7 is titled rather the fallen angels so this was the one where we have james supergirl and manchester black and james has been caught and i do believe this is where james actually stands with the children of liberty he goes to them and supergirl has to break him out and we have the lena luther scenes with the patient who ends up dying and manchester gets supergirl captured so this episode i thought it was pretty good i was i was impressed by it but obviously, looking back, probably my reviews are going to be different to um, what I initially gave them. But I think that was a B standard episode. I thought that was actually, I was very impressed as far as I can remember. Okay, let's move on to the next episode. This next episode is Bunker Hill. This was the season, well, the mid-season finale before we got to Elseworlds, which is coming up very soon. And so... This was pretty good. I like this episode. This was a good mid-season finale, sort of led into the crossover nicely. We have Agent Liberty, who's arrested. Supergirl's fired from the DEO, and Manchester Black, at a point, fights Supergirl, and we have this pretty cool scene in the warehouse. So, I was very impressed. I'm going to go A for this. I really did like it. So, as you can tell, Bit by bit, the season was getting better and better for me. I found by about episode 5 or 4, I was like, okay, we're back on track, we're back on track. I didn't really like the first two as evidence by down here, but now let's move on to talk about Elseworlds. So this is the Elseworlds episode of Supergirl, obviously not talking about the rest of the Elseworlds, but this was a brilliant episode. I loved it to bits. We had black-suited Superman, who was John Deegan. We had Barry and Kara running around the whole world. We have the evil version of Alex. I freaking love this episode. This episode is going straight to S. I love the Elseworlds crossover, and this was probably the best episode in the crossover. So, yeah, very impressed. So, let's move on to talk about the mid-season premiere of Supergirl, which was Suspicious Minds, episode 10. So, what happened in episode 10 was... We see Supergirl and Agent Haley come face to face, and Haley's sort of questioning who is Supergirl, what's her true identity. She goes around, and yeah, it was a very good episode. I liked it a lot. We got to see Alex punching Haley in the face. Yeah, B. I liked it. Okay, now let's move on to the next one. So, this is episode 11. And this is Blood Memory, this is Nia's episode, we go back to her childhood home, well, her parents' home, and we have her sister and her mum. I love the scenes with Nia and her mum in that dreamscape. And then we have the Harvest Festival and her sister, who was really good. I was very impressed by this episode, I really did like it quite a lot. So I'm gonna go B. I, I, maybe I'll organise it at the end, you know, it's kind of hard to put it all back, but... Okay, let's move on, and this one is Menagerie, so yeah, this was a pretty average episode, I wasn't too much of a big fan, this reminded me of some of the earlier episodes in season 4, that was just, it was just about the 
side villain and it just wasn't that interesting so I would probably put Menagerie at a D not a very intriguing episode at all okay moving on we have what was called what's so funny about truth justice and the American way that's a mouthful but Manchester breaks out of prison and this is with the help of the elites who first show up and so they fight the super friends and this was a really good episode I really liked it I reckon I'm going to put it on a B right here. So as you can see, I think there's a lot of Bs for me this season. I don't think there's that many As very early on. There's obviously not that many Ss very early on. But the season gets better and better for me, as you can tell by my scores. Okay, so let's move on. We have Stand and Deliver. This was episode 14 of season 4. So episode 14... Ben Lockwood organizes a rally. We had the peaceful rally with obviously Supergirl, Sean, Brainiac, and Nia. And so Haley assigns Alex to be with Ben Lockwood. I thought this episode was pretty good. I reckon I'm going to put it on a C. I like the fact they brought back the Kryptonian robe. I thought that was a nice callback. And now we get on to the amazing stuff. I love this stuff this season. I thought it was absolutely brilliant once we got onto Lex Luthor. So Lex Luthor's episode, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? What a great episode. I freaking loved it. It was really, really, really good. And I was very impressed by what they did with Lex because I was not excited by Lex. You guys know who were watching at the time. I wasn't that impressed, but damn, was he a good Lex Luthor. That's going straight in the A tier. I really loved it, especially his stuff with Lena. Then we go on to the Red Daughter origin story episode, which was titled The House of L, and we still had Lex Luthor in this episode, and so this was absolutely brilliant. This is my favorite episode of the season. I freaking loved it so much, and... Essentially, what happened was it was the origin of Red Daughter, and so in the wake of Lex Luthor's return, we see a bunch of flashbacks showing how Red Daughter became Red Daughter and how he manipulated her. This is S tier. This was amazing. The best episode of the season. I'm not really including Elseworlds, so you can't really relate it. It's just like completely different to a normal episode, but yeah, that is my favorite single Supergirl episode of the season. I think it's one of the best Supergirl episodes ever actually if I'm honest Okay, so then we move on and past this what we have is Now we don't have Lex Luthor anymore. There is not much Red Daughter We had this amazing scene of Red Daughter in this episode though And this is when she burns down the White House when she attacks the White House and she's framed while well, Supergirl is framed and everyone's like her and this episode was all about Eve Episode 17, so Supergirl has to deal with the destructive aftermath of Lex Luthor, and so she faces her biggest challenge. Yeah, as it says in the synopsis, this was really good. I'm going to go A tier. I was really impressed by it. Okay, so let's move on to talk about the next episode. We have Crime and Punishment, and so we go to Strikers Island. Kara and Lena are in the prison. They're looking for clues about how to defeat Lex. This was really good. I really liked this episode. It was one that I wasn't very looking forward to, and I was very impressed by the end of it. I thought it was very good, so I'm going to put this at an A. There were some great fight scenes, and I really liked how they ended the episode, actually. So let's move on to talk about the next episode. And so after Crime and Punishment, we have this episode, and we have... Ben Lockwood, he's going apeshit in this episode. American Dreamer is the title, so Kara works as a reporter to clear her name as Supergirl Dreamer. Picks up the slack, she's like the hero of the city, we get to see her. There's a few scenes that lack in this episode, and it leads to a big showdown with Ben Lockwood by the end, and James takes drastic measures to stop his PTSD. As far as I can remember, and I can't really remember this episode all too well compared to some of the other episodes... Sorry about the screen glitching out then. So, I thought this was, you know, about C tier. I didn't think I was very impressed. I can't really remember it as well as some of these other ones. But American Dreamer was mainly about Nia and James. And I thought it was pretty good. But I felt like it sort of lacked the quality of the last few episodes before that. Now let's move on to episode 20. This is Will the Real Miss Tessmaker please stand up. So Kara and Lena head to Kaznia to hunt down Lex. 
they find out all the details as to what's going on and then we have you know Car Kara and uh, Lena actually meeting Eve quite a lot of times in this episode so we sort of figure out what's going on with Eve and so Alex receives her phone call and we had some amazing Alex scenes in this episode. This is definitely Alex's best episode and I loved seeing Kara and Lena working together, finding out all this stuff. Kara finds out who Red Daughter is and Kara finds out Lex knows everything about her. So I love this episode. I'm sort of debating A or S. Mm, let me think. So if I was to relate it to these next two episodes, which is 21, which is Red Dawn and the Quest for Peace, the finale, where would I put it? I would probably put this as an A because 21, Red Dawn, is all about Red Daughter and Red Daughter fights Supergirl for the first time. She finds out, you know, face to face because... Kara's finding out about everything that's going on. We see at the end of the episode, we get that cliffhanger with Red Daughter supposedly being dead. And then into the finale, we get the flashbacks, finding out that she is actually alive. So, yeah, she comes face to face. Freaking love this episode. S tier right here. So, let's move on to the finale. So, the finale was titled Quest for Peace. And so, this is the return of Lex Luthor, who is just brilliant as a said many times John Cry kills it so Lex is in Washington DC it's revealed that he's essentially controlled the president this whole time everything goes down we get these amazing cliffhangers and yeah it just culminated in a really really great episode I loved it, it was the best season finale of all the shows this season S tier right here so thank you guys so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed it so just quickly as in regards to what I think should happen, you know, going into next season. I definitely think what the weaknesses of the season were was definitely Agent Liberty and Manchester Black. It just wasn't all that intriguing c c in compared to, you know, what was happening with Red Daughter and Lex. And so with all of that, I would say definitely going forward they actually need to sort of figure out what's happening with the villain and make it as good as say you know rain was in season three so i think they need a good villain and i think what they set up in the finale is a great start to getting a great villain for next season because we have malafayet coming he's very interesting i reckon he'll be here for the first part of the season then we have leviathan they look very mysterious so i'm really looking forward to all of this so hopefully you guys are looking forward to it because I felt like, for me, the back half was 10 times better. As you can see via my rankings, as you'll see right here. So we've got, you know, the Elseworlds episode, Red Daughter episodes, and then the finale. You can see a correlation. The Lex episodes, the Red Daughter ones, they're all up the top. They're just amazing. I love them so much. So, yeah. Let me know. What were your favourite episodes of the season? And what are you looking forward to next season? Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.